Pew, 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 pew. It's Sister Wives, season 18, episode 9. Battle lines are drawn. And it was a tough, tough episode. Um, there weren't really any fake tears till the preview, and there were definitely no. The gloves are off for this episode. Let's just say that. There were no gloves. There were the no gloves. gloves. The gloves are off. Cody and Robin, every, every week. They get, raise the bar. Get dumber. On how much I can dislike them and how cruel they are to all of their children. And of course, there's like five needless digs at Christine. It just doesn't make any sense. Somebody's a, a bitter Betty. So, uh, reminder that if you want to, if you want to watch our live reaction to the episode, where we, we, the episode plays and we're in the corner and we watch it and pause it to react and everything, you can join our Patreon. It's in the link in the description or just Google Nikki Haverstock, um, or search it on Patreon at the 10 or $25 level. But you don't have to. You don't have to. You can just watch this. That's fine. And we buy our books. We still love you. Our books. My books. I just finished yesterday. I wrote five and a half thousand words, which is like three chapters. Um, and I finished a new book. I'll tell you more about it later. It's going to be a sweet rom com set in Hollywood. But I mostly write murder mysteries. Search my name any place or look in the description. I have a whole website. Do you um, ever, are you ever going to have audiobooks? I do have audiobooks. And you can also get them for free through your library. Ask them, call your library and be like, hey, I don't want to pay for her book. How do I get it for free? And they're like, wow, that's what we specialize in. Libraries are amazing. They have ebooks, they have audiobooks, they have DVDs, they have free streaming services. Go join your local library. Um, but anyway, let's get into the episode. It was it was intense. It was pretty intense. It was really tough to watch. The kids, all of the kids, including Brianna and Aurora, I feel bad for. Because no one here is having great mental health. Everyone there needs a therapist. And I say that I and believe better parents would help too. Like, in, in many cases. Specifically speaking about Curly Sue and Robin. Right. So battle lines are drawn. We have a couple of different things going on. So we started Garrison's house. Christine's going to cook dinner for the family. There's no Truly. Truly is with her father. Christine was very positive about Truly has a good relationship with her father and she wants that to continue. And I would point out that um, it doesn't sound like Cody has ever come visiting Truly. It's pretty much just he sits in his big king castle and well, expects people to so come to him. he's so busy. He's so, so busy. busy. He doesn't even have time to spend with his kids. I mean Robin's kids. So he, uh, so it's Savannah, Gwen, Gabe, Garrison, and Janelle. Uh, Gwen and Gabe are moving into Garrison's house. I don't know that that lasted very long. I don't know what the boys, but Christine reiterates, I don't think this is a great idea. I don't think it's a great idea. They're really different. I don't think it's going to work out well, but whatever. And uh, Janelle is like, you know, it's good to have someone in the house who cares if you come home. Which is very sad because Janelle, Janelle obviously has Savannah, but Janelle does not seem to have anyone who is watching over her in the way that, say, I don't know, a husband might? I mean, he's gone for, oh, and by the way, the time is all screwed up. So this episode features Christine's an, um, ex-anniversary, which I believe was March. Last episode or the episode before was Janelle's birthday, which was May. And then this next episode is Easter, which is between those two. So they purposely moved. I think, I, I think people... I think they must have been like, oh, these are the boring episodes. Let's get them out of the way. Oh, here's the grit. Yeah, I, I think they, they... Well, they clearly switched stuff around for editing purposes. But I think it did Janelle a real disservice. Because I think if you understood better where Janelle was... In the timeline. In the timeline, the going out for her birthday thing would have made more sense as like... She's just filming with her ex-husband as opposed to like she's considering reconciling because it looks like between between the time they had the fight and when she actually went out with him, she has repeatedly every single episode said as it as the exact quote was, I have no loyalty or obligation to Cody so they can say whatever they want about him. Yeah. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That says so much more than just we're separated. Yeah. Like, I'm separated is like, oh, I don't know what that can mean. I have no obligation and loyalty to this man is, is pretty heavy. So we get into it. They're at the house. They're going to talk. Truly is with her father, and she's like, we're just going to have a nice dinner. We're going to see how the kids are doing. I don't, you know, it's now been, this is why I said this is, 
this is clearly around the same time as March because Christine says it's been six months since I moved. And last episode, it was six months since Janelle had had the fight with Cody. Right. So these are clearly months and months apart. It is all scrambled. Um, she's going to sit down and talk with everyone. So then Savannah says right off the bat, most heartbreaking thing I've heard. So Savannah, who has been essentially, her father has disowned her essentially, is where we're at. He just stopped speaking to her. She's 15, 16, I think, in this episode. Oh. 16, 17. She's still in high school. Goes to the exact same school as Brianna, and they do not speak. She sees her every day. And then, and realize we have a long-standing rule of not picking on the kids. So I'm going to try to say this very carefully. And this is why I'm already getting heat on TikTok, because I am, um, because I, I We'll get to it when I do it. But I'm trying to make accounting for the fact that these kids live in a bubble, an extremely privileged bubble, with all of the stolen money that their father and mother have taken from the rest of the family. And, and are brainwashed. And, are, and have been stuck inside for two years with their mother who has, and father who have constantly told her no one in the family loves her. So Brianna kind of comes out, so Savannah says, yeah, I see her, but we don't really talk. She just kind of ignores me, and I kind of ignore her. And then Brianna comes in with this whole big speech comes about, out swinging. about how, no, she doesn't talk to Savannah because they picked the, they weren't, something, something about the rules, and, you know, they didn't value us during COVID, and they excluded us, and it does not Just look great for completely Brianna. Completely not what happened, but it is Robin's talking points. Yeah, it's so there's all... reality, and then there's what this poor kid is conditioned. Everyone to ignores the rules, and Savannah clearly doesn't care, and she bursts into tears. And I feel sick because I do not think it's fair to put all of that on Brianna. There's a reason why we have laws about kids, people under 18 can't consent to things because their brain is not fully functioned or formed and all that, and they're under their parents' rule. What's Robin and Cody's excuse? I know, right? And so I feel really bad, and I am I feel worse for Savannah, but I have a great deal of sympathy for where Aurora and, and Dayton and all of those kids are at because they've lived in this bubble, this COVID bubble. Their mom basically sat them down. So I always, always remember, to give you an example, we don't know a lot about what happens in Robin's house because she won't film it. But we do have Thanksgiving 2020 as a really good example, which is when the family did not get together for Thanksgiving and Robin sat up down her kids and said, more or less, the family's not coming to Thanksgiving because they don't love you. That's essentially what she said. And it was terrible. And I remember screaming at the screen, that's not what they said. Nobody said their name. Nobody was talking about the kids. Their conflict was with Cody's which Cody wants to claim Cody's rules. Cody's rules that he didn't know or couldn't write down for eight months. Or tell anyone. But they're definitely his and not Robin. And that he never, ever, we never saw him following. But never. it had nothing to do with Robin, even though we saw Robin constantly freaking out about the rules, all of that. Robin's taking these rules far too personally for them not to be personal. <laughs> all I'm going to say. So I have a great deal of sympathy for that. I also have a great deal of sympathy for teenagers or catty. And John and I both work extensively with teenagers. And so I get a lot of people in my comments who are like, I would never. And it's possible. You might never have done that because you were so meek and all that. But as someone who has worked with teenagers, both John and I worked in the church extensively with teenagers. I worked, I taught college, which is just teenagers. I mean, they're also 18 and 19 year old. They're just barely not high schoolers. And you can tell <laughs> if you ever think, college students are mature, go, you, you go back and you go, oh, they're great, they're amazing. I loved working with college students, but they are, they are just like bonus versions. They're like a victory lap of teenagers. And a lot of those kids, great, wonderful, I see them to this day, I love them, would say some really unhinged things <laughs> that were like, what are you doing? And a lot of us, you know what we do? Our brain... We get older and we forget. We forget what we were like when we were teenagers. Because I see a lot of people who say, I would never, ever say anything like this. And I'm like, hey, that's great. Maybe that's true. But it's not, it, that would be incredibly uncommon if you never as a teenager ever <laughs> never said anything snarky or catty or rude 
or whatever. And I mean, I was, we were teen teenagers where they would say stuff and I'd be like, you can't say that. And they're like, what? I didn't say anything. And I'm like, you said this. And they're like, that's not what I said. I didn't say it like that. I said it like this. And I'm like, well, that is not right. Back me up here, John. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and if you, you can't get any more right. So <laughs> and if you look at say. the if you look at the literature, it has a lot of that like uh, you know kids when kids uh, kids today are so disrespectful, and you find people saying that the 1990s, 80s, 70s, 60s, 20s, 1800s, 1700s. There's a there's a quote from Pliny the Elder, who's per, per, yeah I'm gonna say more than 200 years old. Uh, that's a joke, um, who said kids these days don't understand things. And it's like, this is a thing that people do where you get older and you forget what it was like and the, how you behaved. And your memories of like, oh, I was this scared kid who never spoke back to my parents is like a little bit. Now, I'm not, this is not like kids are awful and parents are, are a great thing because we have Cody and Robin to prove that parents can be awful and terrible. I'm just saying I have a little bit of sympathy for the fact that I think, knock on wood, that Brianna and Aurora will look back at these interviews and cringe. That's all I'm saying. And I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because what? I would like for them, I want to put all of my best energy out towards them that they become better people. Once they escape the cult of Robin and Cody, they'll you know, probably... Do better in life. A lot of us, and I said this earlier, a lot of us uh, went hard for our mothers. No, like, like, defended them. Like, oh, oh. John, would you stop it? That is not inappropriate. <laughs> Get your brain out of the gut. No, my point is, a lot of, a lot of us, a lot of us when we were younger saw the whole world through these gold-tinted, go, 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 rose-tinted glasses, and then we got older and we started to realize that maybe our parents weren't perfect. And some of us realize it younger than older. And some of us, if we have a good childhood, uh, it takes a little longer to figure out. I do think it is telling that Dayton wasn't there. I do think that it is likely that Dayton is sort of moving, both literally because he lives in an RV, but emotionally and stuff, moving away from some of this dynamic and it doesn't want to be it. I'll also point out that Aurora didn't say as much as Brianna did. And... Um, Anyway, sorry. So I'm trying to. I'm, anyway, this is all this is all bull crap. You should just for, fast forward through all of it. I just basically want what? I just basically want to be extra kind to the kids because they're underage, and it's not my job as a 45 year old woman to pick on people who could be my child. Um, I will try to be kinder to them who are not my children than Cody is to his own living, breathing children. I just basically saw what Co how Cody and Robin talked about the other children that were supposed to be their beloved children and thought, hey, maybe me as a stranger could have a little better attitude about it. So anyway, however you feel... Because we're better. Because we are, we are objectively better people than them, and I do feel comfortable saying that. So it's a low bar. Janelle explains that they basically ignore each other in the hallways. There's no relationship. And then Savannah says some very vague things, which is she's always had trouble with the kids her age. And as near as I can tell, she's not referring to her older brother, Gabe and Garrison. She's not referring to Gwen. And so I think that was a very kind way of saying Brianna and Aurora. That's what I got from that because I don't think she's talking about Truly, who's several years younger. And I don't think she's talking about Isabel. Maybe she's talking about Isabel. I don't know. It just kind of felt like when she said Ki the kids my age, she meant Brianna and Aurora. Um, or maybe just Brianna. And she did say that they had a hard time. They do admit it was they had a hard time sort of integrating in. Um, and then they go, Savannah and Cody did spend some time together with Truly. And Christine was like, is it okay if Truly was there? And Savannah was like, no, it's totally fine. Um, which I'll just take at face value. And then Christine kind of says, you know, I just, when I'm, when I'm in town, I want her to spend time with her father because other than the holidays, she hasn't really seen him since we moved. Which I was like, oh, Which interesting. Which is more than the other kid. Well, I kind of go, you know, you can put them on a plane. You could, um, I'm, my guess is there's a direct flight from Salt Lake City to Flagstaff. There's usually, a lot of the ski towns, there's usually a ski town, vacation town, mountain towns in this area. There's usually direct flights to Salt Lake City, to Phoenix, to... Um, Whatever. Denver. Like, those are sort of our hubs. Um, so it seems like there would likely be a, but he hasn't seen her. Um... And then Savannah says, 
uh, once again, just casually dropping the saddest thing I've heard all day. It's okay. It's been so long that, he, that he's been absent, that he's been gone, that it's kind of not a big deal that he doesn't see me. And it's just like, boom! Oh my gosh, this is so sad. But this they is... live a few states over, right? Like, yeah. Like, totally not in Flagstaff also. No, I mean, there's no way he could see Savannah. They, they, they don't even live in the same country, you know? So, I don't know where... Well, we'll get to that. Okay, so then we cut over to Mary and Parowan, which I admit my first response was to groan because I was like, get me back to the... G and then I was like, stop, stop. I want Mary to thrive. I want her to have move on and have a better life. I'm um, still waiting for that redemption arc. I'm, I'm waiting for the redemption arc. I do... I am far more interested in this than I am her and Robin sitting around talking about how Christine's a terrible person. I've been saying that episode Mary and interview Mary are in two different places, and we're getting closer and closer to the singularity where we see Mary in the episode being as snarky as Mary in the interview. And I think interview Mary's right. You know, she's talking more and more about, you know... Like, they don't care. They don't care. They're pretending to care. They don't care. Why am I here? So we see her. She's in Parowan. She's cleaning out the carriage house. Her and Jen, who's her best uh, BFF, and Jen's husband, Sean, um, are there, and they're helping her. Like, she's going to clean out the carriage house, sort of do some cleaning. It's going to be her clothing space. Um, and, it, I mean, it's nice. Well, well, I didn't know Mary could interact with other human beings because she has been so alone and isolated that I thought that she literally sat in a freezer other than when they TLC popped her out to talk to Robin. Oh, I, I figured she just laid in front of the door at Robin and Cody's house so they could step on her, her on, on their way in. Wipe their out. feet off on her. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so, I mean, there's so, there's many, many things you can complain about with Robin and Cody. But their treatment of Mary, specifically Robin's treatment of Mary, is there's no excuse. Mary has always been, like, there's a lot of stuff about, like, oh, well, Mary wasn't good to Janelle and Christine. And I, I, but Robin has, she is always. Up in other people's business. Well, it's the same. Mary has always been on Robin's side, has always had her back. I don't think she's ever said a critical word except occasionally very mildly disagreeing. Like, that's Mary being so upset with, with Robin. And Robin has been terrible to her. So anyway, basically what Mary says is, hey, it's nice to have a man around who can help, unlike Cody. <laughs> and then she said, you know, I'm all alone. And we have a spirit, I have still have a spiritual marriage with Cody, which we, you know, a lot of people, okay, they were very clear in the show that when Mary legally divorced Cody, it obviously screwed her over financially, but they still had a spiritual marriage. And in their religion, if Cody wants to claim he's still part of the AUB, they have to dissolve that before either one of them can move on. Now, I don't think he cares because, you know, he can just he can just collect them. It's like a dead battery. It can just sit there. It doesn't affect him at all. Whereas Mary, if she wants to move on with her life, has to get a release or whatever if she ever wants to stay in her religion and start a new marriage or anything like that. Um, if she was to date while still being spiritually married, in her religion, it would be considered an affair. Um, and so, like... You know, I've kind of let that slip to the back of my mind when I'm like, clearly he's done with you. Clearly he wants to move on. All of that is that they have a commitment beyond. They've had a commitment that at least religiously they believe needs to have something done about it before it'll be dissolved. It's not part of my religion, so it's no, it's a, I'm not worried about it. Christine left their religion, so she doesn't care. But Janelle and Mary, as far as I know, both consider themselves to be part of the religion, and so... It matters to them. Um, so, but then they move on, and then it, this is like this is like season one, Sister Wives, which is remember when they used to go everywhere they went, they would meet people, and he'd have to oh. tell them they're polygamous. They'd have to say they're polygamous, and then they would interview them and be like, "Well, what do you think?" Like they go and buy used furniture, and then they ask the guy, "What do you think of the fact that they're polygamous?" And they're always like, "Well, gee, howdy, I don't know very many polygamists, but gosh, it seems like they really have it worked out." Like every single interview, and you're like, "Okay, clearly, that's clearly they haven't seen season, season eighteen, <laughs> you know." And so they ask him. How do you feel that your wife is friends with a polygamist? And I, we were both like, she wouldn't know because she's Mary's not a polygamist, you know, anymore. And he's like, I mean, our joke was that he was like, I don't know, because Mary's just a single woman. Yeah, right. 
hanging around, although they have known them since. But it's just, it's, they, they always try to push this agenda that, that we care so much that, you know, everyone is like so changed. Like, hey, it's nothing to do with me. It's not a lifestyle I want to live. It doesn't seem to be working, which Janelle is like, it's not polygamy. It's this particular family. And I'm like, I don't know. I've watched a lot of polygamous family. And it seems to be a lot of polygamous family. Like they go, well, monogamous families break up too. And that is correct. But the, the, they say about 50%, but they say that that actually skews quite a bit from people who have multiple divorces. And if you remove that, the number's a little bit lower. Um, and... Uh, but I would say that, of, I'll say, just of the polygamous families I've seen on TV, it's way more than 50%. Now, admittedly, though, the divorce rates of any family on reality TV is also much higher than average. Slightly elevated. Slightly elevated. So is the chance of them going to jail. Much like or, Cody's heart rate this episode. <laughs> same with the chance of going to federal prison for fraud, if you're on reality tax TV. Tax evasion. Or tax evasion, or have tax trouble, or go bankrupt. Or you're a Jew dice. Who does all of them? <laughs> no, uh, um, my point being that, you know, it's, I'm very free to say that it could possibly just be the fact that the people that go on reality TV are not the mentally healthiest, which is why we would like to be on reality TV. <laughs> not to break up our marriage or go to jail for felony, but because we are mentally unhealthy. <laughs> um, and then Mary goes on to say how she had a close a close relationship with Christine, Robin, and Co uh, Cody, but not ever really Janelle. Which then made me laugh because I was a little bit like, wait a lump. I I'm going to say that maybe Cody should not have been lumped in the same category as her sister wives. But I guess what she said is like, it's fun to sit around and laugh. And her and Christine did have that. Um, and I don't think her and Janelle did. J her and Janelle started under pretty bad circumstances because Janelle had a house and Cody and Mary rented part of it and then we're like you know it would be cheaper if we just married her and then we wouldn't have to pay rent <laughs> it's kind of what it seems like it happened um and then no one then the new the new the new meme of the season which i might put on a shirt we have merchandise below um go ahead and check that out we have two designs so far but we're working on more um Make sure that if it's the light design, you put it on a dark shirt. If it's a dark design, you put it on the light shirt. But anyway, uh, they talk about having a favorite wife. And Mary, Christine, and Janelle all say it does not work. You cannot have these families that have a favorite wife do not work. Would have been interesting to, like, to see that in, you know, the history of a seasons of a show. Yeah. Well, then what was funny was as soon as they said Mary said that, and then they cut to Christine saying, I'm like, oh. Oh, let's hear what Robin has. Robin says, Robin's the expert on everything. And they did not either ask Robin or she refused to answer or they didn't use her answer because of all the times in the world that Robin didn't have a long, pol she wasn't polygamous explaining things to us. It's like mansplaining, except it's Robin. Robin's explaining mm -hmm. to us about how favorite wives are awful. But they do ask Cody and Cody rebrands the question that to say, doesn't even say favorite wives are bad and I've never had one like he used to. Instead, what he says is, uh, yeah, so when a man is a favorite wife, what it really is is that he's got one wife who's loyal. And I'm like, oh, oh, I wonder who he could be talking about. Who is he referred to as loyal all the time? And then, um, um, and then Janelle says something like, yeah, if a man, if a man has a favorite wife, the family will, you know, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, most men fail. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, first of all, it's a meme. You need to make just Janelle saying most men fail. Like, just in big letters. I would be tempted to put it on a shirt, but I think it would be too antagonistic to go out in public in a shirt that says most men fail. Um, I'm um, tempted to put Ro but, Robin is the root of evil on a shirt. Uh, maybe I'll like do it a, a, like a figurine of Janelle and then put it in quotes and say most men fail. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do a sticker because then I don't have to walk around in public with that. Because I'm not, I don't believe most men fail at everything. But her, the, the most men fail at polygamy does seem to be the case. Because they're saying, you know, here's the deal. You've got to expand it. You can't just go with what's easy and have one relationship that you like. You've got to learn to love all your wives. And obviously, Cody is trash at that, is, is, what, is really what the takeaway was. But absolutely hilarious. 
And I do think it's funny, like, nobody buys it. Cody doesn't have a favorite wife. At the season 17 tell-all, Mary had left, Christine had left, and Janelle at the tell-all announced that she was now separated. And they asked Cody if he had a favorite wife, and he refused to answer. And it's like, buddy, you got one wife. They really All you need had to, to have say... some consequences for that. And they really need to ask real questions and pull the money if he fails to answer anything. Right? Well, my thing was, I, all I felt like going is, you have one wife. You can't even admit that you, the fact that you can't admit you have a favorite wife when you have one wife is proof to me you've always had one wife and you've just never been able, and you know it. And you know it. Because if anything had changed, you would have noted the change and you would have been willing to say, yeah, I have a favorite wife now because I have a one wife. Now he is starting with that, like, I have one. Now he is, in this season, starting to say, um, but what's interesting is the stuff we're seeing, okay, so the interviews where he's saying he has one wife is after the tell-all was filmed, but the footage we're seeing is before the tell-all, so stick that in your pipe. Anyway, so Gabe and Garrison, they move in. Cody took truly, and this is where we're ba we're back to Garrison's house. This is where Christine said, "I think I did be I did a better job protecting Truly's relationship with her father by having her move." And she's like, "No, that sounds weird, but I could take her and leave, and then whenever she comes back, she can have this amazing relationship." And so then Cody cut, goes cut to Cody with of, his eyes turning red and smoke coming out of his ears, and he said, "That's a bunch of BS re uh, rationalization." Now I have a theoretical question. Cody, I mean, I, uh, about Cody, to my husband, John, who's not Cody, is let's, if, if, if I was conducting an experiment, what I would do is I would have one child who left and came back and had visitations, and one child who stayed in the area, and then you could compare and contrast how good those relationships were. Well, he took her to Christmas and doted on her, and for her birthday ride, he didn't miss either of those two things and not talk to her for, like, six weeks, at you least. mean You mean the oh, child who stayed in Flagstaff. Oh, wait, he did that. He called her for her birthday and then ignored her for Christmas. So the fact that he has no relationship with Savannah, who's still in town, I mean, his argument would make sense and he could say, if Truly was here, I would be spending every week with her, but Christine took her away. Except the fact that he has an actual another child in town who is under 18, who he is not seeing. And he doesn't, he's mad at Janelle, but he does not hate her the way he hates Christine. So this argument that if Truly was there, he would spend more time with him is patently false. Because we have proof, because Savannah's there and he's not seeing her. So... Points to Christine for that. I mean, you know. Yep. There you go. So then we're back to Gabe and Garrison, and he's they basically he says, you know, Cody has told us he only cares about his minor children, um, and then I don't know what this says. And then they didn't have contact for a long time, and then cut to Cody lying where he says we didn't have contact. I contacted them and. He, he claims before Christmas and after Christmas, and Gabe and Garrison said they have it. Now, maybe it's a matter of, like, they're talking about a phone call and he's talking about a text, or maybe they missed a call and he didn't leave a message. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just saying, Cody's just a big fat liar with his pants on fire. That is always, always, always an option to any anything we say. So this is where Robin goes off about how... Cody had this great relationship with the older kids before Cody, but now that Christine has left, he has it. And her implication seems to be that somehow Cody, well, that Cody, uh, Christine and COVID are connected. I think she would like to blame Christine for COVID if she could. She would get away with it. Um, but there's two things that are wrong with that. One, if you listen to this episode, these kids are not complaining about Christine the whole time. They are not talking about how once Christine left, they left. They mention Christine. Garrison mentions Christine exactly one single time. And he mentions her in the same sentence as his mom. So if you're going to blame Christine, you have to blame Janelle as well. Because the thing is about it, it feels like it's two but, different... But our viewers don't live in Robin land. Yeah. Well, the other thing I want to point out is Christine leaving and Janelle's fight with Cody are only about two, three months separated. It feels really different because we saw we saw Christine's fight and her leaving for like a year ago, and now we saw Janelle's fight and leaving. But once again, it takes Cody like a year to realize that Christine, so in his mind, Christine just left a few months ago. She told him she was done nine months prior to that, but he didn't seem to believe her. 
Chris, Janelle has said that she has separated and she has done. I don't think he's realized that even now in 2023, a full almost two years later, I don't think he realizes that she's done. He might after last night's episode because boy howdy. So, um, so we don't know. Uh, and then this is the whole thing. So first of all, secondly, I don't buy that Robin, that Cody had a great relationship with his older kids before COVID either. I just not buying that. They've been talking about feeling neglected since Vegas. They've been talking about in the last couple seasons, they've been saying things like we haven't seen dad since the cul-de-sac. In the cul-de-sac, we couldn't find him. Peyton said that earlier this season. You know, you could find him, but he was never around where we were. We had to go find him, which meant Robin's house. So there was a lot of this stuff. I think the difference was there wasn't a flashpoint of conflict. They felt disconnected from Cody and Robin, but Robin and them didn't have an exact beef with them until the COVID stuff and the rules. And then things like later on, now it's the like, you didn't apologize to Robin, so you can't come over. Oh, but you will go see Christine. Okay, like all this kind of stuff. Um, I don't think, I think this is a case of, I don't think Robin and Cody are close enough to those kids to know anything about how they feel. And they just assumed that because no one, because they never saw them, never talked to them, everything was fine. So I, I have two issues with Robin's statement. One, that Cody had this amazing relationship with the older kids. And then secondly, the other point is, well, what about, so if they have a problem, which it sounds like Maddie, Hunter, and Logan, possibly Aspen, I don't know, but Peyton, they do, we know for a fact, they were all out of the house during COVID. So how is it, how is it COVID's fault that they have a problem with them? And why weren't they at Christmas day? You know what I mean? Like this whole this and I don't think Hunter went over there. I don't have any proof that Hunter didn't go over there, but we know he was in Flagstaff, and I feel like if he had come over, Robin would have filmed it to prove that she is that Cody has this great relationship with his other kids. They certainly filmed McKelty every time she sticks her nose in the door to prove how great a relationship they have with her, um, and they filmed um, Isabel. And truly, I think that if any of the other kids had been there, we would have absolutely heard it. So the idea that Peyton came. And um, Hunter came, and it sounds like Logan came and just asked not to be filmed. The fact that they were all there and, uh, and weren't invited over kind of blows up the whole theory that this is just about respect. So all of that. Um, and then Gwen arrives for Pi, and we get to the discussion about the text chain. We don't get a ton of additional information. But it's pretty much how we thought. Like, you know, all the kids are texting. Then well, one of the kids gives it to Robin, and Robin butts in and... Starts saying, we have to do it this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. Screws everything up. And when the kids say, that's not how we want to do it, she's like, fine, if you're not, you know, you don't respect me as a parent. And stuff happened, which is still very vague. And then a couple days later, Robin told Logan and McKelty to tell the rest of them that they weren't going to be in... They're, they're tell not you welcome. know that she's super mature. Well, and then the other thing is, I just I didn't want to point this out, because I guess McKelty on her Patreon said that she started the text thing. Last time they said Logan started it. This time, I think Janelle thought Logan started it, and Christine thinks Aspen started it. It probably was one of those things where three or four of them were like, hey, should we do this? Yeah, let's get everybody in. Okay, I'll do it. But my point being, it's not really that important who started it. But the point is, it was one of the older kids who started it. Um, and then what I do think is super, super interesting is that Cody has lots of opinions. He doesn't say anything specifically about the text train, te chain. He talks about the kids being disrespectful and jerks and losers and not wanting to be around them. He seems to mostly focus that on Gabe and Garrison, but he does not specifically talk about the text tra chain. Do you which, think maybe because of the matriarchy and the Robin putting her foot down? I think a lot of it is that... I mean the patriarchy. I mean like the COVID rules that totally came from Cody. I think that in some level and degree, he knows that Robin overstepped and that it was not really their business and that the parents never get involved in it and the kids should have done it. But he's not going to say that. So instead, he just gets really angry about stuff that he does feel valid about, which is that Gabe and Garrison are terrible people. I do not agree, by the way, just to be clear. Um... So then um, they talk about, th then this is where Robin just rewrites history because she keeps saying, sorry, Mike. Because she's a liar? I shouldn't be touching my hair so much on camera. Sorry. 
no more touching. Um, it just always parts in the middle, and I have. All right, let's go. Right. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. So then Robin says we were excluded during COVID, which is not even close to what happened. They said if you don't follow the rules, you can't get together. If with you don't COVID. follow the rules of our nanny who brought COVID along with a kid who also brought COVID, then you can't come to our house. And even though Mary did those things, she can't come to the house during that time. So John's summary, that is not being excluded. They could have come. I don't think Christine and Janelle ever said, you can't come. What they said was, Janelle and Christine and your kids, you can't come. So this whole thing about like, this isn't even, this isn't even like different points of view. This isn't different interpretation. This isn't. This These is, are the facts. This is just not true. They were not excluded. That is not the case. They said you weren't welcome. And then they did their own thing. And so the idea, and then Brianna goes, we learned from the text chain that they hated us and excluded us from Christmas. And I just... When you're raised in a cult and brainwashed by liars. Yeah, I mean, that's all I can say is that is not that is not what happened. I get from their point of view that they probably were hurt to find out that everybody got together for Christmas, but it is such a huge negligence of the fact that the reason that the kids weren't at Christmas was because they were told they weren't welcome in the house. <clears throat> so I guess the thing, so I'm like, I kind of, okay. What I would theoretically ask a person who felt that way because I don't want to get all mad at a child, is so when they were told they weren't allowed to come to your house, did you th do you think it's fair to do you think it's fair that they should just have to all sit at home at home alone separately? Are they allowed to get together when they've been told they're not allowed at your house? It's kind of like saying um, if you apply to a college and a college then turns you down and everybody who was turned down went to a different college, would you say that that second college excluded the first? No, you would say. They were all kicked out. They're allowed to get together and do their own thing. If, I mean, this is like, I feel like this is every teen movie where like the cheerleading team doesn't let the weirdos come and then the weirdos form their own band and they're awesome and then they're like, how dare you? How dare you? And it's like, well, you, you kicked us out. We're not allowed. So really bothers me because they made Brianna look so bad because that was such a bad take. Again, and I know it that my, it's my idea for the shirt. Robin is the root of evil. There you go. Um, uh, she then set Robin fire said, to the brown family tree. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Ooh, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe a brown tree on fire with a robin holding a match. Do I have stuff on my face? Do we need a Not anymore? Do we need a refilm from the beginning? Oh lord. <laughs> So anyway, Robin's like, we're we're not getting respected. We were voted off the family island. And I'm like, no, you weren't. You shoved everyone into life rafts. You have all the money, the resources, and the father. Now, I do not consider Cody a prize. Like, I consider that to actually be a knock against them. But the truth is that they have all of the stuff and they've kicked everyone off. And then they're like, oh, no, poor me. It doesn't work that way. Wow. If that doesn't sound like a Robin move right there. Right? So then Robin said, um, then Garrison said that, you know, they wrote back. They told Logan and McKelty that they weren't going to be part of the sibling things. And Garrison said, you know, it really hurt. Um, and then they said, you know, Robin made it all about her. Um, and then Cody out of nowhere just comes in and goes, those are my rules. Those are my rules. And it's like, okay. Okay. The more you man. say it, the less we believe you. Right? Like. Then I don't understand. Then it wouldn't have been easy just to be like, hey, guys. Wouldn't it have been easy when they asked for them in writing to have them in writing instead of fawfling for and eight months like, and not being able to and then because he, you don't know them because they're not yours? Because then he goes, well, this is what the nanny does, which she didn't do. I mean, they, they, they could have followed what the nanny did, which was go home and live your life. And then come back and take off your shoes or whatever it was. But it wasn't. He wanted them not he to... He excluded the whole family because they were going to give him COVID. And then the nanny brought it. And then one of Robin's kids brought it. So. And then Robin's like, everybody makes me the bad guy. Because you're a monster. And then Gwen goes, we don't, why do we need a dad when we have two moms? Now, Gwen comes in hard for both Cody and Robin. Which I think is going to be really interesting to see what kind of phone calls she got last night or this morning. I'm because sure, she came in. I'm sure Cody wants some money back. Yeah. Allegedly, he gave her money recently. Which Allegedly. Well, and then that seems to coincide with the sudden shift in all of her videos from, from disliking her dad to like, you don't understand how bad Christine is. Maybe Gwen's calling is to be a politician. I don't know. I don't know. That's... 
that is beyond the scope of the show. So, um, and then Gwen talks about missing Aurora and Garrison talks about missing Dayton and, um, and then they talk about, well, would you want to, what if you sat down with, with Robin and Gwen's like, no, cause she would just make it all about herself and manipulate and cry. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. what's funny is she doesn't even have that level of energy on the videos I've seen. I've not seen all of Gwen's videos because I just, I mean, who can keep up with the, but the when you're right, fandom? you're right. That was right. And that when was you right. you agree with us, you're right. And she's like, Robin would just start crying. And then Gabe shares, cause Gabe has been super quiet. He seems so like dejected like this is so difficult on him um and admittedly he had a rough time last season and so i don't know so he says that he actually does see aurora at school they go to the same college and it sounds like he goes and finds her because he you know and then he said that he he said that they're fine he you know and then aurora speaks and she also she looks she also looks terribly upset and she says that she sees Gabe and hugs him and they say, I love you to each other. And she said, you know, all I can say is that Gabe has always been very kind to me. And it breaks my heart because that I feel like that says so much about maybe her expectations of how the others feel. It's too bad their parents aren't as kind to them. I know. Instead of using them as pawns to... And then Gwen says, for PR. I genuinely don't think my dad loves me. It hasn't loved me for years. And Savannah's like, oh, you know, and I, there was a little moment and I couldn't tell if they were trying to sell, tell Savannah not to like disagree with Gwen because that's how she feels or if they were telling Gwen not to feel that way. It was a little confusing in there. But Savannah says, you know, I think he does love you. He's just really mad at you for some reason, which is also so heartbreaking because here's this, these young kids young adults trying to figure out what is going on with their family and why their father is so angry at them. And then the editors cut in with Cody being like, Oh, he is. And he's like, whatever those kids do, I do right back. They're jerks. They're awful. They're terrible. And I was like, well, they certainly... And if you think we're pumping that up, go watch the scene yourself. Oh, my gosh. Because we don't even have the energy for that nonsense. Yeah, it's very, very clear. Like, I was waiting... Because it's clear that so much of these interviews are them either saying... It's like this is what roid rage. It's like that it's very clear that it's oftentimes them either showing them a clip or telling them about a clip, and it's a direct response to that. And, and so I expected him to be like, no, I love all of my children, but I'm just really mad at their behavior or something. Not the direction he went. <laughs> Not the case. Not the case at all. He just goes in this tirade about how awful and terrible his kids are and everything they do to him, he does right back. Which, I mean, I guess that's a way to parent. I wouldn't, I don't know if I've ever read a parenting book that that's recommended a way, it. That's a way a six-year-old would definitely parent that's, with, with that level of maturity. So then we cut over to, immediately over to a scene with McKelty has brought Avalon. They have a whole, like, photograph studio to take pictures with. And then Cody's like, you know, Av um, McKelty values our friendship and our relationship and makes a priority to bring these kids over. And I was like, whoa, some real positive energy from Cody over here. Well, they're, they're, I, they're allowed over without groveling at Robin's feet. Well, and I also wondered if that was maybe a dig at Maddie. Because I'm digging at everybody who doesn't cow down. Because they don't see. I don't think they've seen Maddie's kids. I don't know that I've seen and, them. And then Robin goes on about how Tony. Her and Tony have a special close Brown bond. Knows her for so long. And they really get each other. And I was like, that is not a compliment to Tony. Let me tell you. Wow, that's. And, but then you cut over to Christine, and I assume that Christine also screamed and yelled about McKelty being a traitor. No. Nope. Oh no, she didn't. She just said. She just said that it's great that Robin and her have this special relationship. And they keep they keep pushing this McKelty and Robin have always been close. And it's hilarious because they do a montage of clips in which exactly one of them is McKelty and Robin next to each other. And the rest of them are Rob Robin and, and Cody. Cody. Or like the family picture and they like zoom in on Robin and they zoom in on McKelty. And I'm like, you seriously don't have any other pictures of them together? But it's just funny to me because push, up until... Push the narrative. Well, up until last season, there was no indication that Cody, that McKelty and Robin had this special relationship. 
And I mean, Christine says it, Cody says it, Robin says it, McKelty says it. So who am I to disagree? It's just amazing that the camera over the past 12 years did not catch this. It managed to always be like off screen that they were so, so close. Um, and I will say though, Robin does have a habit of like, if it's not her kids, they're all, she always has like a quick, like um, when Mariah's child came out, she was the first to rush in when the kids say that they're, she's always the first one to rush in. She was on vag cam at uh, McKelty's child's birth. No, vagina vision, <laughs> vagina vision. or cooter cam. Because they do show <laughs> the only other clip they have, and I apologize for the crude language, but I thought it was oh. so weird that they had, they had Robin on the computer while McKelty was giving birth and like moved it around so oh. she could see the baby crowning. And I was like, you, that is so weird. And to me, it felt, it felt so performative of like, I'm so close with McKelty. I have to be there during her birth. And it's like, you know what is actually not helpful? What is helpful, now I didn't have anyone there other than John during my birth because I had a C-section and they were pretty busy doing stuff. But I could see someone there in, in person being like, I can get stuff, I can do stuff, I can turn things on, I can turn things off, I can dab at your forehead, I can be, I can hold your hand. I don't know what having someone on a camera does, but whatever, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that person who had a home birth, that's great if you are, just not me. I didn't necessarily want anyone other than John there. It, I, I get overstimulated when there's like, like at a restaurant with too many people, let alone something like giving birth. It just felt like I needed, John was there and the anesthesiologist was there. And him and I actually had a nice discussion. We went to the same college. Um, I just wanted my mind off of it. John was terrified. I was a little terrified. John saw more of it than he intended because the curtain didn't come down. And a C-section's pretty intense. So they did that whole scene. And then they go to, uh, Christine goes to, then the rest of the episode pretty much is... Uh, so that's half the episode right there. <laughs> no. Next on the next, the next half. No, no, no. But the rest of it is all pretty quick because it's, Christine takes everyone. She takes three of her friends, with, of which it looks like I one mean, talks. To, to be fair, that was like a season's worth of drama in that half an episode. Oh gosh, the kids. I mean, I could listen to the kids talk about stuff all day. And that includes, to a certain degree, Robin's kids because they say so much that tells you so much about their home life that they don't intend on because it's not a lot of it's not based on what actually happened which makes me think they don't even watch the show because it's one of those things where you go that's not that's not what happened like I saw the discussions I saw what the kids said I saw what the mothers told Cody I saw what Cody told you and those were not the same things what the what the mothers told what the kids said and what the kids the mothers told Cody were consistent and then what Cody and Robin turned around and told the kids was not consistent with what was just happened. Like, nobody has ever, like I said, nobody has ever said anything bad about Robin's kids. There's been a few incredibly mild criticisms a long time ago. Like when, um, I think it was Garrison, uh, Sullivan tried to hit someone and one of the kids told him, no, we don't hit. And they were like, you don't parent the other kids. And it's like, yeah, you do. That's literally... What the, what, that's what they all do. That's what they've all done. That's what you guys told them to do. You don't parent Robin's kids. That's what they do. You meant. also don't eat from her fridge if you're not from her. And some of the kids did talk about uh, Brianna crying a lot. And those, those kids being a little bit different in how from their family. Extremely mild. And I didn't see it as a, like, we don't like them so much as, like, yeah, things are different with the new kids, but we're trying to get used to it. And that was, like, season three and this is not, this is not okay, recent. Okay, so the second okay. half of this episode. No, 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 so the second half of the episode, which will go pretty quick, which is uh, Christine takes, she's going to celebrate her ex-anniversary, which is like, I guess in March, someone told me. It would have been 28 years if I did my math correct. Um, and um, it sounds like a lot of these people, they said they were her good friends, but they met at Isabel's going away party, which was, or uh, graduation party, which was not that long ago, so... I mean, I have friends that I make really quickly, but anyway, um, anyway, so one of the gals is divorced. They talk a little bit about that. Cody calls out of the blue and then they cut to him and he's like, I heard she was in town. I wanted to see if Truly's there. And I'm like, you heard she was in town or you heard she was filming. 
because I think I do not buy that it was a total coincidence. It really felt like I don't know. It just did not ring true. Like much of what's vomited out of his you mouth. You know, especially like, well, I wouldn't find it truly could come over. I thought last time they were together, he's like, whatever, arrange things with Robin. Like, he doesn't seem, doesn't seem at all like this proactive parent. And you could call Truly and all that. Just didn't seem, just didn't seem very real. And then Christine goes in this hilarious thing about, like, divorce is super hard. It's hard on kids. It's hard doing it on TV. But I'm so happy I did it. And then she's like, if you're thinking of getting a divorce, just do it. You're already miserable. Just do it. And I'm like, ho, oh, ho. Love the energy. Don't turn it toward me. We're good over here. But you take that energy and you you send it to someone who needs it, babe. Because you are, she is rocking it through. And then they're kind of talking a little bit about Cody. Janelle very clearly said, kind of like dodges the question of how she's doing with Cody. Um, because she's like, I just met these people. I don't know them. I'm not going to have that conversation, which is so, so Janelle. Um, she does loosen up a little bit toward the end. But they're like, are you comfortable hearing Christine talk about this? And, she's, and she says in the interview, I have no obligation or loyalty to him, so I don't care what they say. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to say, boom. when people say things like she's not really, she wants to reunite with him, I'm going to say, that says more about anything. Like, she might be separated, and I think she's open to reconciliation if he completely changes um, but this is where she is now, and it's very clear that current Cody is not getting anything from her. She is done, D-O-N-E, with him. Um, and they gave Christine, like, a patriarchy cup, and they talk a little bit about Mary, and Christine is trying to explain, this is why, also why I'm like, it's hard for me to believe that they're, I don't know if it was for the camera, maybe, like, where they're like, can you just kind of talk about some stuff and ask some questions and stuff? Like, it was one of those things, because so they're like, well, doesn't he have another wife? And they're like, yeah, Mary. Like, okay, so Mary's still in the rotation. And it kind of came out recently that maybe they didn't have a rotation, but they, it sounds to me like what happened was, because I've seen a lot of people say things like, oh, they never had a rotation, they made it from TV show. What it sounded like to me is that they used to have a rotation, and then basically when Robin came along, and especially once they moved to Vegas, and especially once she had a baby, that started to move. And I could definitely see him going, you know, Robin's got a newborn, I need to spend a little bit more time over there. You know, I don't want to be tied down. You Christine know, is the last year. You know, and then him losing the rotation, because it does seem... And then the cul-de-sac, the problem was, is everybody could see that the rotation was not just... Well, he had an office at Robin's. Well... And a, and a garage. Um, and then... The, and then, because it basically what they said is, what Christine and Janelle both said is there was more of a rotation before Flagstaff. And there ended up, basically, he started saying that with Robin all the time when they got to Flagstaff. But it sounds like it's just been this slow deterioration. You know, they for a long time used the example of a polygamous family as like a, as like a wheel and each wife is a spoke and Cody's in the center. And those spokes have been tattering and tearing and falling off. And Mary fell off a long time ago. They've and been was sort sabotaged. Of rattling around. And now he's got this one e uneven spoke. Um, Unhinged, I would say. Yeah. And they talk about the fact that up until recently, polygamy was a second-degree felony. I think only in Utah, but now it's decriminalized. But I thought it had been decriminalized longer. And there was some stuff in there that I was like... At one point, Janelle explained polygamy about how they have the one single house. And I had to just absolutely laugh because I've been like, Janelle, we've been here for 18 seasons. We know this. I get that they specifically asked her to explain it. This was not just a random thing. And it's also good for newer viewers who are like picked up the hype and started watching. But it was hilarious because they're like, so bet we had this house in Lehigh and they each had their own kitchen. And I was like, oh my gosh, we've been sent back to the remedial class. <laughs> we know all this. Okay, so, um, and then they start talking about, oh, I missed it somewhere in here where Cody said, that Christine was a bad sister wife, that she was a, cr that um, she wasn't, I never said Christine was a bully. I said she was a crap sister wife because she talked about Mary and Janelle. And I screamed because I go, you don't care about Mary and Janelle. You've never cared about Mary and Janelle as long as it didn't, wasn't inconvenient for you. 
But like, but the fact that he yeah, won't she just was say, definitely crap when she's like, "You got me all these gifts. You didn't get anything for Mary. What's wrong with you?" I mean, that's that's definitely being a crap sister wife. And here's the deal: Mary and Janelle even said, "Hey, that was something we all did. That is part of polygamy. Like, you cannot blame Christine for that." But then the fact that he left out Robin is like. You just know he's lying. At least if he had said Robin, we would be like, well, at least he admitted it. But we know it's all about Robin. We know that he only really cared when it was Robin. I've never heard him until recently complain about Janelle talking about Christine or Christine talking about Janelle. It was only, first it was about Robin. And then he realized that that made him look biased. So then he started talking about Mary and Janelle. But he never cared. And he doesn't care. And he never will care. He doesn't, he doesn't. He could run Mary down with a bus, and he could not care about her any less than he does right now. I mean, he just, it's just awful. Um, so then he, now he's saying that Christine forced her way into the marriage, and that, um, and that she needs to stop trash-talking him to the kids, which, based on the interviews we saw with Robin's kids, at least his older ones, it's really clear who's doing the trash talking to the re about the rest of the family. And the whole episode, I didn't see Christine trash talking her Anyone. Cody to the kids. Mm -mm. Um, she says she's happy to be divorced from Cody. That's the closest you get to, to really trash talking him. Um, and then, um, and then Christine says what I've been saying all season, which is he should have just admitted that he fell in love with with Robin. And that he no longer wanted to be in a polygamous relationship. And he just sat us down and said, Great, okay, I just want to be with Robin now. How do we do this? How do we, how do we fix this? But that's not, that's not what he's doing. He's pretending that that's not the case and making us to blame so he has an excuse to get away from us. A thousand, thousand, billion, million percent what happened. He loves Robin. He doesn't want to have to deal with all of everybody else's emotions. Or kids. Or kids. Frankly, he doesn't care about his kids anymore either, except when they can come and tell him he's right. And um, and I think, I mean, I, I hope this is not the case for Truly. I would, I, I want her to have a good relationship with her father, but it just gives me so much, like, tension in my chest of, like, what's coming. Because he's already gotten rid of Savannah, and she's only a couple years older. How much longer is he going to... I mean, maybe he'll keep trying with Truly out of spite to show that... But I just I just really worry. I want only the best for those kids. And it seems like so many of them are these walking wounded when it comes to what's happened in this family. And that breaks my heart. Then we get to the end of the episode. And I know we forgot something. I apologize. We can't... We don't care. Well, I, I don't mean... Care. It's longer than the episode. So I'm doing the best I can. Um... We didn't get a next episode summary. We got a coming up, and it appeared to be things that were not just from the next episode. So I think we might have hit somewhere around the mid-season. It would not surprise me if this week in our sneak peek, we get a mid-season trailer for the rest of the season. I think we're about halfway. I've said this before in other places, which is um, TLC. This is their number one show on T TLC, at least last in this season. And the Christmas season is some of their best advertising time, so it does not surprise me that they would make sure that the, it goes all the way through Christmas. And so I think that we're going to have, um, I think we're going to have a, uh, we started this season a little bit early, and so I think we're going to go a little bit longer, which would make sense. Um, that's also a sense of that they've been dragging out some of these episodes. Like, did we really need two whole episodes of, of Robin and Mary? Um Talk, several episodes, three episodes of first them talking about how Christine and Janelle are terrible, then about Mary leaving, and then another one about Mary leaving. And I want Mary, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in Mary having more screen time and realizing that Cody and Robin are awful and maybe spilling some dirt, but all of that. But, um, and we have more of Janelle talking about she's not really married anymore, and we have more of um, Robin crying. Cries. When about it, how something totally not connected to her, she's upset about. My guess is that Mary basically says, my guess is that Mary decides that she's going to fully, fully leave. Because she's like, it's clear, you know, I told you I might be leaving. You don't and this to might care. be the edit, but cut to Robin fake crying, this is not the life I wanted. Which has nothing to do with her, which I would absolutely believe is not just deceptive editing, but... You know. Yeah, I mean, it would. Now this we'll is the see. thing. It would make sense if Robin was always hanging out with the other kids. It would make sense if she was always hanging out with the sister wives, and then they left, and she was devastated. I could understand that. 
I could, th in fact, that's kind of what happened with Janelle when Christine left and she cried. That I believe because they actually had a relationship. But this idea that Robin is so heartbroken because people she never sees and doesn't reach out to and doesn't text and doesn't call and doesn't visit. And doesn't allow over during COVID even when they, they follow, follow the all rules. the rules. Now she's so devastated she's leaving. I just don't buy that. And then the last thing that I want to absolutely mock Cody for is Janelle and um, Savannah move into a slightly bigger apartment. And Cody walks in and goes, I just feel like I'm not welcome here. It's like, yeah. Because you're I not. I wonder why that could be. I wonder why you feel that way. Was it because six months ago or whenever, I don't know when this episode, this is from, but um, that months and months ago you had a fight and she told you that you were done and she asked you to pack up your stuff. So yeah, it's not your, like, what are you talking about? It's not my, she told you she's separated. What, what, what is, is your head full of walnuts? Like, what is wrong with you that you cannot get the most basic, basic thing? So anyway, thank you for, for joining us. Um, hit me up. What was the saddest line in the whole episode? Because there were so many sad things and I cannot pick. I think it might have been Savannah when she said, um, I, I actually don't miss Dad because he's been gone and absent for so long. It's really not a difference. Mm. Oh, oh, heartbreaking. Bye.